Good evening. Thank you for joining me in this Bible study. Get your Bibles out and turn over to the book of Mark. The book of Mark. We'll be uh, endeavoring in our study here just in a moment as uh, you get turned over there to the book of Mark. Just remind you that last Sunday evening we endeavored in a study together about the ten lepers who were healed by Jesus that was recorded for us in Luke chapter 17. Uh, we noted that all ten of those lepers cried out to Jesus uh, for mercy as they longed to be healed from that loathsome disease of leprosy. And remember that Jesus uh, instructed them simply to go and show themselves to the priests. And as they began their journey uh, following what Jesus had instructed, and while on their way to see the priest, they were healed. But remember, there was only one that returned to express his immense gratitude for Jesus and how wonderful his mercy and compassion was in healing him of that leprosy. Now, we noted that we need to be more like the one versus the nine and that we need to not only give thanks, but live out our thanks by thanks living. Now, and as I was thinking here, of course, uh, you know, there's another man that we actually find recorded for us in the scriptures in the book of Mark that uh, also suffered from that same disease of leprosy. And he had an encounter with Jesus. And this account is actually recorded in three of the gospels. And we're going to use the one that the account that's recorded for us in Mark chapter one for our main text. And we're going to see there Mark chapter one and verses 40 through 45 is our main text. And as we speak of leprosy, we think about that loathsome disease that it was, uh, the dire situation that we even considered when we were talking about the 10 lepers in our last study last Sunday evening. Uh, think about this as, as we carry that idea over into Mark chapter 1 and what we're reading about the dire situation that this individual was in. So Mark chapter 1, we're going to be reading verses 40 through 45 together here. Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him, and saying to him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand, and touched him, and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy left him, and he was cleansed. And he strictly warned him, and sent him away at once, and said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go your way. Show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing those things which Moses commanded as a testimony to them. However, he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the matter so that Jesus could no longer openly enter the city, but was outside in deserted places. And they came to him from every direction. Now, in this text here, in this account that we're considering, Mark chapter 1, uh, verses 40 through 45, and we let those words resonate with us. I want to ask a question. How many of us are willing uh, to come into contact or encounter those who are sick? How many of us are like that when we come in contact with someone who is sick, those who are afflicted with different uh, ailments or diseases, or, or even those who are like the one we mentioned, we think about in our study and in, in, uh of, of uh, in our recent studies in our Wednesday night Bible classes, uh, those that even Peter and John encountered, uh, you know, you know, thinking about the miracles that that existed during that time and the people that they came in contact with. But how about this man with leprosy in our text of Mark chapter one? Now, if we are quite honest with ourselves, I believe we all agree we tend to have, um, well, what I would call hesitancy. Uh, to encounter such folks, right? Uh, we are hesitant, and that stems from what we consider appalling as one sees what is unpleasant and different from what we are used or accustomed to seeing, what we consider to be the norm. Now, if we perceive the possibility of a contagion, we will usually blaze the path to the opposite direction to keep from becoming contaminated. If there's anything that we've learned, if anything we have seen, especially over the last year, COVID-19, right? 
That's what most people's thinking of probably right now and as I give this lesson about who wants to come in contact with those who are sick. But as we think about that, these folks we have labeled as ones who are not to be touched. They are, as we're talking about in this lesson, they are the untouchables. The untouchables. And I think we can easily make application in how we view those who are spiritually sick, those who are sinners, as being the untouchables. And we oftentimes forget of what we mentioned in last Sunday evening's lesson about our dire situation that we were in, diseased in sinfulness. So we want to make some applications from this account. And, and Jesus teaches us really a very valuable lesson in this by what he did in our text. So let's first of all, we want to do so, have some understanding here about the law of ceremonial defilement. We have to kind of establish this again or else, you know, because sometimes we, we have troubles with this. And I mentioned this uh, briefly as well last Sunday evening, and I want to reiterate it for those who, uh, again, who may not have uh, watched that lesson, uh, studied that yet, but also a good refresher for us. Because again, this takes us back to what we briefly considered last Sunday evening regarding conditions of physical flesh such as leprosy. That is specifically mentioned in the book of Leviticus chapter 13 and 14 that speaks of such a condition that would be classified as being unclean. That's the word you see, unclean. And as I share with you here from Leviticus chapter 13 verses 46, now the leopard on whom the sore is, his clothes shall be torn and his head bare and he shall cover his mustache and cry, unclean, unclean, he shall be unclean. All the days he has the sore, he shall be unclean. He is unclean and he shall dwell alone. His dwelling shall be outside the camp. So, so basically what we find is those who were afflicted with that of leprosy were obligated to keep their distance and to announce their uncleanness uh, lest someone get too close in contact and thereby uh, become contaminated. Now, as noticed in Leviticus chapter 13, verse 46, those who suffered from leprosy were not able to be with their family. They were not able to be with their friends, their community of loved ones. They were not able to do that. So they would find only solace uh, with those who were afflicted with the same disease. Now, if, if that is something that was well known at that time, was that those who are clean need to stay clear of those who are unclean afflicted with such a disease. Now, with such, we must understand that those who suffered from such an affliction would be the outcast and would be looked down upon, truly, really, uh, as the lesson is entitled, the untouchables. Now, if anyone even had the appearance that they were half dead, it was the practice to let them be and go on one's way lest they come in contact with such and become unclean. You know, as you think about this in Luke chapter uh, Luke chapter 10, you actually find uh, something interesting here uh, in, in the discourse between Jesus and the lawyer in Luke chapter 10 uh, that you find Jesus giving that parable, remember, the parable of the good Samaritan. And I want you to notice, I want to read there in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 down through verse 37. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered rightly, do this, and you will live. But he, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him... He had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, 
when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, He who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. What is interesting about that passage, and I know it's, I'm sure it's a passage that we've all read at one time or another or many times and have looked at that and heard lessons on it. But again, rem remember what Jesus did there is he broke the barrier down. He, he broke through the barriers, demonstrating what compassion was. Jesus was showing through his loving, merciful, compassionate actions what it means to go and do likewise. Because even as we see in Mark chapter 1 of our that we see Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him. Jesus touched the unclean and they were healed. Now it seems quite evident to me that throughout the scriptures, the Lord has used the uncleanness of the physical flesh to provide us with an understanding as to how we look in our uncleanness, spiritually speaking. Jesus has done that. And I want you to think about this, unclean, unclean, spiritually. You know, a moment ago in just our reading of Luke chapter 10, that discourse between Jesus and the a lawyer, we, we saw in that parable as to as to how the high, how the priest and the Levite in the parable of the Good Samaritan viewed the man who fell among the thieves and was described as wounded and half dead. And what did they do? They passed by on the other side. Did y'all notice that? They did that. They passed by on the other side. Now, it, it is apparent that those who were spiritually unclean would be viewed in such a way as well. Because a prime example of this is actually recorded in Luke chapter 7, Luke chapter 7 and verse 36 through 39, which, is a, which records the account with uh, the Pharisee, which was, of course, Simon the Pharisee. And remember that uh, this uh, Pharisee had uh, invited Jesus to his house. And then there's this woman, as verse 37 says, a woman in the city who was a sinner when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house and brought an alabaster flask, uh, flask of fragrant oil his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. But you see in verse 39, now when the Pharisee had, who had invited him, who invited Jesus, saw this, he spoke to himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching, y'all see it? Who's touching him for she is a sinner. It is no doubt in my mind about how sinners and the Pharisees' eyes, the scribes and Pharisees' eyes, looked or considered those who were spiritually unclean. Now, Jesus, of course, would go on in this passage to use that opportunity to teach a very powerful lesson as we read on in verses 40 through 50. We don't have the time to look at that. Maybe at another time uh, we'll, we'll consider that lesson there. So, this is a prevailing attitude that exists today. That those who are spiritually unclean are not worth the time nor the effort. The attitude is of the priest and the Levite who passed by on the other side. Or like that of Simon the Pharisee in Luke chapter 7 that we were just reading. Who looked down on the woman who he spoke to himself as having disdain for. Now, if you remember in the powerful Sermon on the Mount that Jesus gave in Matthew chapter 5, notice verse 20, For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, there's something we know about the scribes and Pharisees. They were well known, weren't they? Well known for their external adherence to rules and their righteous deeds done so meticulously, they were considered as being so far above those of the average person. So Jesus' statement would have kind of been a, a shock factor to his disciples to hear that. My friends, the scribes and the Pharisees, what they lacked was compassion. 
They lacked compassion. And it is noted throughout the scriptures there in the Gospels. You see the encounters that Jesus had with them. And such a lack of love, such a lack of compassion is seen even in John chapter 8 and verses 1 through 11. And in John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11, we find there, uh, it's recorded of the scribes and the Pharisees bringing the woman that was caught in adultery. And, and you remember that as, as they were, you know, going to uh, stone her, they wanted to stone her, which we know that they were trying to set Jesus up. He, you know, they, they were always looking uh, to trap Jesus. And uh, what, did they, what, did, what did Jesus say to them? Notice what he says in verse 7 of, of John chapter 8. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. He's saying, cast the first stone. Now I can just picture them coming with stones in their hands as they tested Jesus. And this is what Jesus says. He who is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. I can just hear the stones falling from their hands one by one, thumping on the ground as they are convicted by their conscience and went out one by one until Jesus was alone with the woman standing in his midst. And what was Jesus' words to the woman? Verse 10, 11. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Now, were the scribes and Pharisees better than everyone else? Absolutely not. Am I better than everyone else? And I say again, absolutely not. We must constantly remember that Jesus, out, that he stretched out his arms, taking on the sin of all mankind. That means my sin, your sin, everyone's sin, and died for us who would be considered the untouchables with the very affliction of the loathsome dis-ease of sin. Romans 5 and verse 8, Paul said, But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's what he did. So we might ask the question, well, what does this mean for us today? Well, Jesus demonstrated what humility, love, mercy, and compassion is. You know, the Apostle Paul would tell those disciples of Christ in Philippi in Philippians chapter 2, 1 through 5, that if, if, therefore, if there is any consolation as Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Peter would even say in 1 Peter 2 and verse 21, For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Friends, I, mean, I believe it's very clear that we are to take on the very mindset of Christ. We have to be able to look through the eyes of Jesus, the fresh eyes specifically through how Jesus would look at people. And I must have the mind of Christ. I must look and follow the example that Jesus has provided. And as we see there in 1 Peter 2 and verse 21, that we should follow his steps. And if I'm going to do that, then I will go out and take the time, as Peter and John did with the lame man in Acts chapter 3, who many would have considered an interruption to their day. We will look at those who are burdened down with sin, although spiritually unclean. We will see them as people in need of the same Savior and Master who is willing to stretch out His arms to die for my sins and your sins. We will look at those who are lame spiritually as those who are in need of encouragement and strength to renew their spiritual vitality. Hebrews 12, verses 12 and 13 says, Therefore strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. Friends, by looking through the eyes of Jesus, by following 
in his footsteps, we will show others who Jesus is through our lives as we demonstrate, as Jesus did, the love and compassion. That's what we'll do. Friends, it's quite easy to sit in the pew time after time thinking how others are so sinful and weak. That's really easy, isn't it? Um, and with such a mind as that, uh, it shows really who is the sinful one and weak one in it. Just as no one would want to admit to be among the nine lepers that we talked about last Sunday evening, those nine who didn't uh, return to express their their gratitude, their gratefulness to Jesus, the same for not wanting to admit to be like the priest or the Levite in the parable of the Good Samaritan or Simon the Pharisee. Friends, we don't want to admit that at all, do we? We don't want to admit that we may sometimes be more like them than what we care to admit. But how often do we find ourselves on any given day carrying on the same narrative as the priest, the Levite, Simon the Pharisee. We, we are surrounded by those. We are surrounded by those who have been considered the untouchables. Don't forget that you were one of those untouchables just as I was. This lesson serves as a good reminder of what Jesus was willing to do for us. Stretching out his arms reaching out on that cross to willingly die for us. He demonstrated his loving compassion for us who were unclean, unclean spiritually. The question is, will we show the same love and compassion for those who are unclean spiritually and help them find the great physician that is Jesus Christ? And I hope that the answer that we give to that is yes, we will. I couldn't help but think at how the leper who had been touched and healed by Jesus, you know, he couldn't contain himself. You know that? He couldn't contain himself. And although Jesus told him not to say anything to anyone, but just to go on his way, show himself to the priest, and offer for his cleansing those things which Moses commanded as a testimony to them, you know what the man did? He began to proclaim openly and freely. It definitely seems that the man was overwhelmed by such a compassionate touch and healing. It's interesting that we as disciples of Christ are to rejoice and we are to be overwhelmed by such a compassionate touch and healing spiritually and to share it with others. That's, that's our responsibility. That's our job. But more times than not, we tend to do the opposite of that. We tend to do the opposite of what this healed leper did. This leper received a physical healing of his flesh. He may have been afflicted with this condition of leprosy for so long, he had forgotten what it was like to be loved, what it was like to be cared for. And I don't think this leper would have forgotten what happened on that very day. I can only imagine that someone with leprosy would understand how horrible how horrible it is for someone who is in the same condition as he once was. Do you see the applications that we're making today? We received a, a spiritual healing of our souls. Do we understand the dire circumstance that we were in and how horrible it is for someone who is in that same dire condition of the loathsome dis-ease of sin? My question, friends, is will we reach out and touch the untouchables? Will we show love? Will we show compassion? Will that mind of Christ that we're studying about this evening be within us? And we pass it on to others. And friends, you may be in the dire condition right, right now yourself. You may be in that condition. You may be afflicted with the loathsome disease of sin and, and our need of the healing touch of the great physician. And I would submit to you, friends, if you need to put on the body of Christ in baptism, then please don't delay. Please get in contact with me. Please let me know. If you want to study more about it, I want you to do that. I want you to do that because I can empathize with you because I know what it's like to be lost in sin. 
I know what it's like to be burdened down with that heavy weight. And friends, you can be cleansed of it. That's what the scriptures teach us as we see in Romans chapter 6 verses 1 through 6. That we can be go down to that watery grave of baptism. That we can come up to walk in newness of life. Newness. Cleansed. Whole. Before the Lord. That relationship with Him. That opportunity, no matter what time of day or night, is ready for you. And please feel free to let me know if we can help you and assist you in that. Or I would even submit as a disciple of Christ who, who's struggling right now. Maybe you're burdened down with sin and you need that great physician. Friends, willingly, willingly ready to touch the untouchables. To be able to help you with prayers on your behalf. Prayers for strength, encouragement, repentance. The opportunity is awaiting you as well. Don't delay. Please let me know how I can assist you in making your life right with God. That's so important. It's so important. And I hope that I can help you do that. I want to thank you so much for joining me in this Bible study. Yes, it's brief Bible study that we have. It's what I have about 26, almost 27 minutes of time that we were able to spend together in this, in this uh, Bible study of Mark chapter 1 from this account of, of, the, uh, of this encounter that Jesus had with this leper. And what a beautiful account to remind us. So many applications, so many things we consider. And I hope that it has stimulated your hearts and your minds that we will be just like Jesus. Love, compassionate friend. He wanted to help all those he could. Hopefully, we will do the same. Reach out, help someone. Help someone. If we can study with you more, please let me know. And as I want to, of course, uh, invite you, uh, as I have been for the past year, I think it's been now, of course, uh, during this pandemic, I want you to know that you are so uh, so invited to be our guest uh, that uh, we still have the modified inside services, the 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. We have two separate services there to accommodate all the folks that we have and, and accommodate the social distancing things. Uh, so please feel free. Let me know. Uh, we'd love to have you. We've had so many visitors. We have such growth. It's been so amazing, and I just want you to join us in that. Come to 704 South Broadway Street in LaPorte, Texas. 10 a.m., 11 a.m., or if you're not comfortable coming into the building uh, area at this time, and maybe some conditions that you have that you're not able to come inside, you, you are more than welcome to join us in the FM transmitter uh, option. The 10 a, that, that is also available the 10 a.m. and the 11 a.m. service. You just pull into the parking lot, turn your radio to FM 91.1, and uh, I will make sure to bring out to you uh, uh, self-serve communion cup as well as the bulletin and the songs that we'll be singing. And if you're not able to, to join us in person, then please, uh, and you might be a shut-in, as we have several that are shut-ins here at our own congregation, uh, and they are able to tune in live uh, as we live stream our worship services at the 10 a.m. hour. So you can also go to our YouTube channel or our Facebook page and be able to tune in there to that live stream at 10 a.m. So several options there before you. Uh, you are, again, more than welcome to join us in that. My email address is there, dj at laportechurchofchrist.com. So please, uh, if you have questions, comments, maybe there's a topic that you would like to study on or hear about, well, send me a email and let me know what it is. And if there's something I can assist you with, again, dj at laportechurchofchrist.com. Love to hear from you. All right, well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and a great, great week. God bless.